praise God. We're back for our storytelling hour. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that you enjoy these stories. On today, our theme is No Rest for the Wicked. And we're coming from Micah 2, 4 through 11. Let's have some background. Because Israel had rejected God and worshipped idols, they would be taken captive. Micah 2, 4. In that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say, We but utterly spoil. He has changed the portion of my people. How has he removed it from me? Turning away, he has divided our fields. 5. Therefore, thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by lot in the congregation of the Lord. 6. Prophecy ye not. Prophesy ye not, said they to them. That prophecy they shall not prophesy to them, that they shall not take shame. 7. O thou that art named the house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord straightened? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? 8. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. Ye pull off the robe with garments from them that pass by securely as men adverse from war. 9. The women of my people have yet cast out from their pleasant houses. From their children have ye taken away my glory forever. 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with a sore destruction. 11. If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee, of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. And our golden text is, Do not my word do good to him that walketh uprightly. From Micah 2 and 7. Amen. God is a wonderful God. Even when he brings us correction, bad news, he brings it to safeguard his people. Amen? Tim, how many sandwiches can you and Jerry eat? Tim's mother asks as she packed the lunch for her 10-year-old son. The boys had been planning a fishing trip for months. Now that school was out, Jerry's father was taking them out to a lake on friend's property. Tim checked the cooler. His mother was packing. I think two is enough for me. Maybe pack an extra one for Jerry. He eats a lot. Let's see. Chips, cookies, fruit juice, and chocolate bars. Looks great, Mom. He gave his mother a hug and then set his gear by the back door. Jerry's father would soon be arriving with his pickup truck. Isn't my boy going to give me a hug before he goes? Tim heard as he passed his grandmother's room. Oh, sure, Tim said. I didn't want to wake you up. His grandmother gave him a long, serious look. Then she asked, 
Are you sure the weather is going to be okay for camping? Grandma, the weatherman said there was only a 10% likelihood of storms. I listened to the TV first thing when I woke up. Tim gave his grandmother a hug and patted her shoulders. Besides, I have my phone and Jerry's father will check on us. All right, the elderly woman said, reaching for her glasses. However, my knees tell me a different story from what Mr. Weatherman says. I feel it in my bones that a storm is coming and my bones hardly ever make a mistake. So take care. When the boys got settled near the almost perfectly still lake, Tim told his friend about his grandmother's need. They laughed about her warning. Maybe she could get a job predicting the weather, Jerry said. She could start out saying, my old needs tell me that today will be sunny and warm. Tim continued, but by evening a storm will come in, so be prepared. By late afternoon, the boys had fished as long as they wanted and began preparing their tent for the night. Tim gathered sticks to make a campfire. However, as he looked across the lake, he noticed occasional lightning. The lake still was mirrored smooth without a ripple. Grandma's knees, Jerry kidded. As he arranged the kindling, I saw the lightning. Don't worry, there are no storms in our area. Remember the weather report? However, the boys soon heard Jerry's father's truck bouncing over the hill and down to their campsite. He seemed to be in a hurry. Pack up, he called as he turned towards the boy. A fundal cloud was sighted five miles from here. The weather is going downhill fast. The people of Israel had once lived happily in the land that God had given them. When they chose to obey God's command, they enjoyed life. However, as the years went by, they rebelled against God more and more. They began to worship idols of wood and stone, the way their heathen neighbors did. Judah's leaders were becoming wealthy. Money really had become their god. They cared more about getting rich than about obeying the Lord God. It did not bother them that they were cheating poor people. Their hearts were exceedingly sinful. God was very displeased with his people. He had promised to bless them if they obeyed him, but he had warned them that they would be punished if they disregarded his commands. Praise God. God told his prophet Micah to pronounce judgment on Judah. They were living such sinful lives that the nation around them had opportunity to mock Israel's God. Micah prophesied, Micah prophesied that their land would be taken from them. They would lose their homes. They would lose their reputation and they would lose their freedom. It was not God's fault. It was their own disobedience that would bring judgment. Oh my God. The leaders of Judah did not want to hear such prophecies. Sound like the people today. They wanted to enjoy life. Although they had ruined people's lives by stealing their clothing, cheating the poor, and forcing women and children from their homes. Micah said that if the people wanted good news, they would have to be sorry for their sins and obey God's law. 
The leader of Judah foolishly thought that if they got other prophets, the news would be better. Perhaps they could even bribe other men to give them the news they wanted to hear. Have you heard that before? Those leaders were just as foolish as people today would be if they thought that by changing the channel on television, the weather would get better. News reporters are supposed to report the news accurately. If a tornado is coming, that is not the time to tell people that it is a good day to fish or camp by a lake. A warning means that it is possible that bad things could happen. Amen? This is not your time to rest, Micah told Judah. Their land was polluted with sin. Judgment was coming. Eventually, the Babylonian army will attack their cities, leaving them broken down. What would happen to the people of Judah? They would lose everything, their homes, their property, and their wealth. Many people would lose their lives. The rich people who wanted a life of rest would be forced to work for a living as captives of the heathen nation. Michael was right when he said, this is not your rest. Michael gave a word, picture of the kind of prophet Judah wanted. They could pay a false prophet to tell lies. He would tell them that everything was fine, that they should go on enjoying their lives, as we see many doing today. How sad that Judah wanted lying prophets instead of men who let them know that God loved the nations, God loved his people, but it was time for them to be punished for disobeying him. Amen? God did not take any pleasure in punishing his people, but if they continue in their sin, eventually Judah would cease to exist as a nation. God planned for his son to become a member of these special people. God even told Micah where Jesus, the Messiah, God's son, would be born, Micah 5 and 2. One of the reasons Israel is still a nation is that God has taken care of them. Israel became a nation again in 1948 after not being a nation for a very long time. They have had a special history when they sinned. God, their father, chastened them as any good parent would. Amen. So, your daily reading for this week is, on Monday, Why did some men and women bless Job? Job 28, 7-17. Tuesday, How did Job treat poor people and widows? Job 31, 13-22. Wednesday, Who should rejoice that God is his judge? Psalm 7, 1-8. Thursday, what is God's attitude towards the wicked? Psalm 7, 9-17, Friday. Who is the only perfect judge? Psalm 9, 15-20, Saturday. What two classes of people will God judge? Proverbs 11, 1-10, Sunday. What kind of prophet did evil people want? Micah 2, 4 through 11. Father, we thank you for this storytelling hour on today. Bless your people with understanding as they go through the week. Prepare them for the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty and bless the peace of Jerusalem. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen.